welcome to Rochelle Fosu TV. Today we have with us none other than the esteemed Dr. Jerry Matthew Carter Jr. Thank you for being here. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate you coming. Um, just wanted to get a little bit of understanding about who you are. Can you tell us, tell our audience who you are? Um, my name is Jerry Carter and I'm uh, a pastor at Calvary Baptist Church in Morristown, New Jersey. Been there for 29 years. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, where most of my family resides there. Um, but for the past 32 years, I've lived in New Jersey, 29 years here and uh, in Morristown, and then um, a few years down in school. So um, for the most part, I've been here for you know, over, over 30 years. Wow, very long time. Um, as a pastor, I'm sure you see a lot of difficult times and you see people through a lot of difficult times but I'm sure you yourself has, have gone through some difficult times of your own and we're here to talk a little bit about both capacities one as being a caregiver at some point yourself tell us a little bit about that experience and who you care gave for well I was never a caregiver for an extended time right I had um, moments and seasons of caregiving uh, mostly for my mother. Um, she was in a nursing home. She passed this past April. But she has been in a nursing home, some kind of assisted living facility for the past, oh, maybe for the past six or seven years. Oh, wow. Seven, eight years. And so my caregiving would be just one, making sure she's cared for. Right. And then two, um, doing little things with um, with her when I was with her because she had dementia and Alzheimer's. She wasn't able to feed herself. Right. During the uh, last year or so, so I just had to help her with that. Right. And uh, just being there for her during the moments, during the times that I was in Columbus, Ohio, is where she was. Okay. Um, mainly I was here, but when I would go there, there would be just like little quick hits of our caregiving, but okay. never for an extended time. Right. And, and when you had to do those times, what struck you about having to take on that role in the moment? What was interesting about it? What, what, what do you remember about that? I remember her like going full circle and having to treat her like a baby. Right. And uh, so that was probably what I remember the most. Right. Um, how the one who took care of me, I had to take care of her. Right. And how she would almost went back to an infant stage. Right. Um, so I think that's what stands out the most. Right. And I don't think you're alone in that. I think there are a lot of people out there who have to struggle with going from having a parent or a family member, a spouse, whatever it may be, and going from seeing them in their full selves mm -hmm. to having to care for them in sure. a way that you would never expect or imagine. So you're not alone in that. Um, now, after you went through that experience, how do you think it changed you? Or um, affected you? Well, it affected me. It would make me sad to see her in that stage. Um, when I remember her being so strong and so um, full of energy and life and all that. So, sense of sadness. Um, at the same time, it was a almost a gradual kind of letting go of her. Um, mm -hmm. Gradual letting go mm -hmm. and coupled with that, a gradual grief. Mm -hmm. And so those two were, were hand in hand. Every time I would leave her, it would be letting go and grief at the same time. Right. So, um, that was probably, you know, the kind of feelings I would take away from that and how it changed me. It, it just gave me more appreciation for who, who she was and who she had been earlier in life. Right. And you make an important point, which is as you're caregiving, you go through a grieving process. Mm -hmm even as you're caregiving because the relationship changes mm -hmm. over time what used to be the relationship before no longer is and so you kind of are grieving that process during that process without even having gotten to a point where you quote unquote should be technically sure. grieving and that's an important point now as a pastor you have to deal with it in the sense that you have people who you 
minister to mm -hmm. who are constantly caregiving in different seasons of their lives how do you manage that how do you manage keeping them going when you for instance have to be kept going during that yeah. same time that must be difficult uh yes i in, in sermon preparation and in personal interaction try to say things that i know will strengthen people right. who are doing some um some level of caregiving thing because i believe that strength for them on one hand comes from their relationship with Christ right. and so I try to um, make it applicable to people who are going through seasons of adversity sometimes in very general terms right I'm knowing that that any conversation or any principles about adversity will apply to people who are going through right and caregiving then the other thing I do is just sometimes just ask in personal conversations How's your mother doing? How's your father doing? How's right. your husband and wife doing? Just so they know that there is someone who cares and who is inquiring. Right. Because that in itself communicates, communicates strength. Um, and the good thing is I have people around me who, who share with me kind of a symbiotic relationship where they you know, they ask me questions about how I'm doing and how um, the people around me are doing, people who've been sick or even people who have, um, who are deceased now, parents. So it's, 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 it's mutual, it's, it's, it's give and take. So I, I give to church members and some of them give back to me. Oh, that's excellent. Now, there's an important point that I'm not sure if you're aware of, but, and you mentioned that your mom had dementia. Mm -hmm. A lot of, um, what I've come to learn is within the African-American community, African-American women and Latino women are twice as likely to suffer from dementia as are Caucasians. Um, still don't understand the reason yet for why that is, but it's, it's interesting because I think particularly for your community, for instance, it becomes important, uh, especially with the baby boomer generation retiring, we're going to see a higher level of that happening and therefore a higher level of caregiving needed mm -hmm. how are you going to address that as a ministry within your church what do you see for that um i think the one of the things that we can do is we have a what's called a golden years ministry at our church mm -hmm. and we can be more um intentional about educating um, people who are growing older, as well as their 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 children right. and their their spouses, who will be having to care care for them. I think the main thing we can do is to educate, um, to bring in experts right. to help people know what to prepare for right. and how to um, relate to people who are dealing with Alzheimer's and or dementia um, because I think knowing how to relate to them is going to be critical right? Uh, because as a caregiver especially for somebody who's, um, who's, who's losing some of their mental capacity it's very difficult and it's very it's very easy to get impatient right. and angry at them right. when they don't remember stuff mm -hmm. and all that. So I think as a ministry, we can um, educate again and to mold and shape people to be ready for when it comes. Right, no, that's great. Um, now, you mentioned when we were talking before here that you had to handle some of the financial and legal aspects for your mom. Mm -hmm. What challenges did you face with that and how did you address those? What kind of help did you need with that or didn't get that you think well, might be necessary? I, I think again, had I known some some information before I had to know it, right? That would have been better than me having to um, rush to get to know what agencies to talk, um, right? To connect with and um, uh, prep myself for the I mean hours of paperwork and going from this place to that place. Um, probably could have been more efficient with that had I talked to some people ahead of time as this was coming. Right. So um, I think that, that. But were there any resources you ever heard about that someone told you about or directed you to when you went to the, the rehab center or anything? 
Um, between myself and my oldest brother, mm -hmm. my oldest brother would, would he would get most of the information. Okay. He'd pass it on to me and tell me what he needed help with. Okay. So I wasn't the one who was in direct contact. Okay. With getting this information, but I did hear him um, lamenting the fact that it was so much paperwork. Right. And sometimes you got to run around to go from this agency. No, we're the wrong ones. Go here. Right. No, we're the wrong ones, and go 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 back to there. Right. So I just wish that the whole process of getting financial help, for instance, right, um, from you know Medicare and all, was right. was uh, was simpler. Right. And so. So yeah, I learned in that process of just how complicated that whole thing can be. Yeah. Just to bring it up a little bit, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a funny story that you can think of that you'd like to share. Um, just a funny memory. Sometimes these things become funny after the fact, but not in the moment. So. Um, I think the only thing that comes to mind is periodically I would, in order to, I don't know, add a little excitement to my mom's life, I would take her in a wheelchair and I would roll around the hallways really fast. Right. And she would smile because it would be like some recreation for her. <laughs> right. It would be like, I would just, I would, you know. And then sometimes I would take her outside and I would do the same thing. I would have a sidewalk out in front of the facility. And I would take her out, roll her real quickly out, give her some, 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 some sun. And I would just try to push her as fast as I can, as safely as I can. Right. Well, and she would and she would laugh and she would look back at me like I was doing something crazy. Right. Um, but one day as, as I was doing it, I I kind of hit. There was a little <laughs> ridge and sidewalk. Kind of hit that, and she um, kind of was like flipped up a little oh bit. Oh my gosh! And I <laughs> fell off the wheelchair until I tilted it back uh, real quickly. And so I was looking around, making sure no one saw me. <laughs> <laughs> but to her, that was fun. Right. And a little excitement to her life. So right. that's probably the final thing that, that comes to mind. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say to the caregivers out there um, that I may have not asked or you think is necessary or important, maybe about their faith, something, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I would um, simply say that this is definitely a part of life and that. Um, God cares for people through people. And so God uses you to actually do God's work, whether you're conscious of it or not, because God cares for people and um, God does it through other people. He doesn't always do it directly. So you have to know that when you're giving care to people, you're actually doing a, a work of God. And so it kind of changes the way you the way you do it and God actually is actually in that person so you're not just ministering for God but you're ministering to God and it kind of you, you, you do it a whole different way where you almost reverence the people that you're giving care for and not just seeing them as a burden but seeing them as somebody in whom God is incarnated Wow amazing thank you so much for watching this episode if you liked what you saw subscribe to the channel if you'd like to tell your story we want to hear it tell us at rochellefosu.com thank you for watching and see you out there bye